How much do you spend on your lunch each day? If you spend just $5 a day eating out for lunch on weekdays, that's $25 a week, over $100 a month, or $1,300 per year. If your lunch spending is closer to $10 a day, go ahead and double those numbers. That's $2,600 each year. Or maybe you don't buy your own lunch, but you send your kids to school with lunch money instead of brown bagging it. Our kids' school lunches cost $275. With three kids in school, that's $180 a month on school lunches. Yikes, that's a lot of money. The good news is, if you have a habit of eating out for lunch, grabbing something to eat on the go, or sending your kids with lunch money, you have loads of money-saving potential in packing your lunch. You can put those savings straight toward your big goal. We're Stephanie and Mike from SixFiguresUnder.com, where we help families live frugally so they can pay off debt and reach their financial goals. We're on day 10 of the Frugal Fresh Start Challenge. To see the other videos in this series, check out the playlist in the, in the description below. We're excited to help you come up with a plan for regularly packing your lunch. If you've mastered the art of packing your lunch and eating it, then keep up the good work. Stick with us for a few more ways to maximize the savings on this frugal and healthy habit. If you aren't already packing your lunch, what's holding you back? Before we talk about practical tips and ideas, we first need to address whatever it is that's keeping you from bringing a sack lunch to work or sending one with your spouse and kids. Are the mornings too rushed? Do you find that you don't have anything to put in the lunch when you get up in the morning? Do PBJs make you cringe? Are you worried about what your coworkers will think? Have you thought of the obstacle or concern that's preventing you from bringing your lunch? The thing that's forcing you to eat out? On day 10 in your workbook, there's a place to write down what's stopping you from packing your lunch. Describe your struggles there. Then ask yourself, is this obstacle a bigger deal than my big six month goal that I set back on day one? Unless your boss subsidizes all of your lunches out, I'm pretty certain that bringing your own lunch will bring you closer to achieving your goal than eating out will. Now, if packing your lunch does turn out to be just terrible, you can always go back to buying lunch after you reach your goal. Okay, I have a confession. Packing lunches is not my most favorite way to be frugal. <laughs> when my kids were younger, I dreaded waking up and packing their lunches if I hadn't planned ahead. When I was on top of my game, I'd have lunches packed for Mike and the three school-aged kids the night before. But I wasn't always that organized. I would still send lunches with them every single day because I just can't stomach paying $2.75 for a school lunch. It just meant mornings were rushed and hectic if I didn't plan ahead. Now, Mike and the three kids pack their own lunches. In fact, Mike does the whole morning routine, including taking the kids to school, while I stay home with the three little ones. Now, just like we talked about with cooking at home on day five, planning ahead is key to success in packing lunches. When you're in a hurry to rush out the door in the morning, that's not the time to plan how to put your lunch together. First, we'll share some tips to help with planning lunches, and then we'll talk about some ways to maximize your savings. Make sandwiches ahead of time and freeze them. By lunch, they'll be thawed and ready to eat. Don't freeze lettuce or other greens for sandwiches, but meat and cheese or peanut butter and jelly freeze perfectly. Learning that you can freeze PBJs was seriously life-changing for me. If you want to see exactly how we do it, I have a whole video showing how. I'll put a link below. It's so wonderful. <laughs> Make a list of possible lunch foods and incorporate them into your grocery list. Sometimes you only think about dinner foods and ingredients when you grocery shop. Be intentional about putting lunch things on your grocery list. You don't want to feel forced to buy your lunch because you feel like you have nothing at home to put in your lunch. There's a spot in your workbook to brainstorm some ideas of what you'd like to have in a sack lunch so you can be sure to put them on your grocery list. Have fresh fruit on hand, like bananas, apples, grapes, and oranges or cuties. They're easy to toss in a lunch and are good for you too. And don't forget veggies. Carrots and celery sticks can be cut ahead of time and stored in water in the fridge so they don't dry out. Having them pre-cut saves so much time. It's really easy to grab a handful out of the water and put them in a sandwich bag or a small container for your lunch. Here's a good tip for people who don't like PBJs every day. Thankfully, everyone in our family loves them. Plan to make enough dinner to have leftovers to put in lunches. We often make homemade pizza for dinner. We each make our own and eat it right off our own pan at dinner time. The kids love this. 
For the next day or two, everyone gets leftover pizza in their lunch. I like leftovers for lunch. It's more interesting than a sandwich sometimes. I really like having a salad in my lunch. Sometimes if we have a big salad for dinner, Stephanie will put the leftovers in a Rubbermaid container so I can grab it and put it in my lunch. Some people make a week's worth of salads in mason jars and just put a jar in each day's lunch and then dump it in a bowl at lunchtime. You can search mason jar salad on Google or Pinterest. It's actually a thing. Um, mine are kind of simple, but they work great. Okay, let's talk about maximizing your savings. By packing just about anything, you'll be saving money over going out to eat, but there are ways to save even more money on your sack lunches. Here are some tips. Instead of buying individually packaged items that are marketed just for lunches, buy a normal or an extra large size package and divvy it up into individual packages yourself. Think pretzels, carrots, cookies, mini muffins, etc. It'll cost less than the pre-packaged counterpart, but still be easy to grab when you're putting together your lunch. You can divvy up a week's worth of lunch snacks at one time, which is especially helpful if you're making lunch for lots of people. Reuse sandwich bags. My husband and kids bring home their sandwich bags if they aren't dirty, and we use them again. Each bag only costs a penny, but when there are four to five in each lunch, it adds up. It also it has less waste, and one more thing I don't have to remember to buy as frequently. The alternative, you could use reusable containers instead of sandwich bags. You may have seen cute bento box ideas on Pinterest. I haven't, but Stephanie says that everyone's doing it. Uh, you don't have to be all cutesy, but you can still use compartmentalized containers so you don't produce so much waste or have the expense of more and more sandwich bags every day. Yogurt is one of the most marked up prices in the grocery store. We make our own yogurt, which saves tons of money. And I put the yogurt into leak-proof containers like these awesome ones and send along a spoon. We also can our own applesauce and send it in these same containers. Of course, you don't have to make your own yogurt or applesauce to save money. You can buy large containers of yogurt or applesauce or whatever snack your kids like and divide it into smaller containers for lunch. Well, stores with closeouts and clearances like a grocery outlet often have great deals on granola bars and other lunch snacks that are near the sell-by date, but are usually just fine to eat. So Stephanie calculates the price per item and only buys them if they're ridiculously inexpensive. Individual string cheese can be expensive per ounce, unless I find it at Grocery Outlet, but you could cut a block of cheese into cheese sticks and put those in lunches. Instead of juice boxes or buying a ridiculously priced half pint of milk, pack a water bottle. We send our kids with water and a reusable water bottle every day. I keep a water bottle at my desk and in my car. Drinking water is not only good for you, it saves money. It's something that's better than anything else we can drink, really. Most of us don't drink enough of it. Now, in order to realize the savings of packing your lunch, you have to actually eat it. I've heard from my blog readers that even when you bring your lunch, even when you bring it with you, there's still a temptation to go out to eat instead of eating the lunch you packed. Your coworkers, who haven't committed to being more frugal, to achieve their goals want company when they take their lunch break. One reader said that her husband will go out with his coworkers, but he'll bring his own packed lunch with him. I thought that was a great example of someone who sticks to his guns and enjoys the best of both worlds. Try being open with your coworkers about making changes so you can reach your financial goals. You could even challenge them to bring their own lunch. Maybe they've never thought about how much money bringing their lunch would save them. If you've been in the habit of eating out, you don't have to quit cold turkey. You could cut back to just eating out once or twice a month. Let your friends know that you'll take a rain check for a lunch date until then. Whatever you decide, remember that attitude is everything. This is a choice you're making, not a restriction being imposed on you. It's not that you can't afford to eat out. It's just that you're choosing to spend your money in a different way. You're not a victim, you're being proactive by making a choice and sticking to it. Okay, time for your day 10 challenge. Start packing your lunch. Challenge yourself with a personal goal for how often you will brown bag it, whether it's for you, your spouse, or your children. You can do this. We'll see you back here tomorrow for day 11 when we get to start talking about debt.